Welcome to Nonprofit Profiles. I'm Genevieve Riotort. On today's show, we'll learn about how the Bay Foundation is working to protect our beautiful ocean waters with innovative programs that bring together residents, government, and businesses. We'll start by hearing about inline water treatment systems for Santa Monica with Victoria Ippolito, the Foundation's Grants and Programs Coordinator. Welcome, Victoria. Hi, welcome. Thank you, Genevieve. So, Tell me a little bit about yourself and how you came to be with the Bay Foundation. Well, I always had an interest in the ocean and mm -hmm. protecting it. I loved going to the beach when I was a child. So I got a degree in college in marine biology. And I came out here and learned about the Bay Foundation and all the work they did. And I knew I wanted to be a part of it right from the start. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. We've got a marine biologist. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so tell us about the project, the inline treatment systems. What is, what is that all about? So the project is to catch storm water before it makes its way to the ocean. So, so what is storm water exactly? Exactly. Storm <laughs> water is all that water when it rains or when people hose down their driveways or wash their cars, mm -hmm. all that water that collects and you see running along the curb into those gutters, mm -hmm. they, that is stormwater runoff and it leads straight to the ocean. And while it's running along the curbs and all the places it's going over, the grasses, it picks up the fertilizers and the pollution along the way, the oils that drip on the street from the cars. Sure, so even just trash. And exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. So the inline system is to help prevent some of that polluted stormwater from making its way into the ocean. I see, so what happens to the water what, what was happening to the water before the systems started to be put in place, and then what happens now? So before the system's in place, it goes straight into those gutters that you see along the streets, mm -hmm. and it, it goes through underground piping system that leads straight to the ocean. So when so you're at the goes beach, directly. Yeah, there's no treatment at all. Mm -hmm. So these systems are developed and constructed to help catch that stormwater and actually infiltrate it into the soils. Oh, so it doesn't go to the, o it's not like it tr gets treated and then goes to the ocean, you're actually preventing it from going to the ocean at all. Exactly, so that flow of water, especially the what we call low flow or dry weather flow, mm -hmm. when there's not a lot of water being produced because it's not raining, it's just the small amounts from people washing their cars and sure. irrigating I mean, we, their lawns. We often have drought seasons exactly, here in California. Exactly, but you'll still see that little bit of water mm -hmm. heading down from over irrigation or sprinklers that actually water a little bit of the sidewalk sure. in addition to the grass. So all that dry weather, almost 100% of it is caught and infiltrated. So it percolates through the soil mm -hmm. and it never makes it to the ocean with those pollutants. So it's actually nurturing plants and things that here that otherwise might have to use fresh water? Kind of. So mm -hmm. it makes it to the underground aquifers at times, so mm -hmm. then it could be reused. And in some instances, not in the one here in the city of Santa Monica, actually this is one of the only projects of its type that I know of in the area, so it's definitely oh, used wow. as a demonstration project mm -hmm. and hopefully more could be developed like it. But you could also have tanks underground to capture that water and then reuse it. The city of Santa Monica actually has another project at the Pico Library where it has a large cistern. It's basically a large tank that captures the rainwater oh, and cool. treats it. And then they use it to flush toilets and sure. stuff inside and to irrigate as well. So where are these uh, treatment systems located in Santa Monica? So the inline demonstration project is on Nebraska and Franklin. Mm -hmm. And then the Pico Library has that big cistern. And then there's another project the city of Santa Monica did with funding from the State Water Resources Control Board and mm -hmm. the Bay Commission on Bicknell Street. And that's what they call the Green Street Project. And what does that mean, the Green Street? So they did quite a few things there. They put down 
pervious pavement mm -hmm. over the parking lanes, not so the drive-in lanes. So what does pervious lane. mean? And the water will just seep through the pavement instead of running off. So oh. it's really cool if you're ever on Bicknell Street and you have a bottle of water, you could just <laughs> pour it and you could see it percolate through the concrete, whereas normally it just runs off. Sure. And oh. you'll see it it's textured slightly differently. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't notice unless you're paying attention. But if you're in the area, you could look in those parking lanes and see that that concrete is a little different and that's because it's pervious. Oh, that's so cool. And that's only one of the things at Bicknell Street. They mm -hmm. also have what are called bioswales. Mm -hmm. And that's just a fancy term for the planted areas that are actually depressed a little bit. Mm -hmm. So the water can accumulate in those planted areas mm -hmm. and then slowly infiltrate again or percolate into that soil. So it sounds like it's, it's sort of serving a dual purpose. It's for one, preventing the pollution from reaching the ocean, and then it's also water conservation so that water that otherwise might be used to water plants doesn't have to be used and we can conserve water and use that um, water that otherwise would just be running off into the ocean. Exactly, and it refills our aquifers or our underground water systems, which sometimes run low because of droughts. Mm -hmm. So for our viewers, what can individual people, residents, um, you know, what can people do to assist in this effort and to really prevent more, um, you know, runoff water? Yeah, there's so many things that the homeowner alone could do. There's things that help reduce stormwater, and those are stormwater barrels, so rain barrels, they're mm -hmm. called. And the city will actually has a rebate program, so they'll actually pay you money to compensate for the cost of putting in these things. So mm -hmm. you could get a rain barrel, put it at your house, and then use that water that you collect to irrigate your lawn. And then you could also, they have another rebate program for redirecting your downspout. So instead of directing it down your driveway, straight into the street and out to the ocean, you could redirect it into an area where more plants are that need that irrigation. Well, those are great ideas. And of course, people can go to the website and find out even more that they can do. Ex thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, it is so inspiring to hear about how the Bay Foundation is working with our local government to minimize pollution and protect our environment. When we come back, we'll hear about how our local restaurants are doing their part. Hey, Mom. Yes, I'm home. Save you some dinner. Plan now for a major earthquake. Contact the Santa Monica Office of Emergency Management. Don't be caught in the dark. We are back and here to talk about the Clean Bay Restaurant Program is Grace Lee. Hi Grace. Hi. So what is the Clean Bay Restaurant Program? Well, it is a program um, where we work hand in hand with seven cities, and one of them being the city of Santa Monica. All right. Where we certify restaurants that go over and beyond the legal requirements for um, preventing ocean pollution or stormwater pollution. And so, what do restaurants have to do to become um, Clean Bay Restaurant certified? <laughs> sure, sure. I'll I'll go into that. Um, first, I want to wow you with some numbers. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow us. Wow away. Okay. <laughs> so every year, 30 billion gallons of stormwater runoff and urban runoff um, is dumped into Santa Monica Bay. Wow. That's a lot. It and is. some of that comes from restaurants. Mm -hmm. They do contribute to the urban runoff problem, mm -hmm. um, not only through runoff, but also trash mm -hmm. and oil and grease. Sure. So there are about 26,000 restaurants in the LA region. Mm -hmm. And on average, a restaurant can generate about 300 pounds of trash every day. Wow. So 26,000 times 300 <laughs> pounds of trash every day, it's about 7.8 million pounds of trash that's generated by the restaurant industry every single day. Okay, now make me feel better. Okay, so <laughs> even if a small percentage of that gets into our storm drains, mm -hmm. which leads directly to our rivers and ocean, mm -hmm. it can be, have a tremendous impact. Sure. 
So we, um, at the Bay Foundation, mm -hmm. we work with several cities, um, including Santa Monica, mm -hmm. and we identify and we certify restaurants that do their part to prevent ocean pollution. Mm -hmm. So do things that prevent the trash from going into the storm drain mm -hmm. and prevent any type of urban runoff from going into the storm drain. So what are some examples of what restaurants can do? So instead of um, rinsing their hardscapes around their, their restaurant, so, so what's sidewalk, sidewalks, okay. parking mm -hmm. lots, if there's an outdoor eating area, sure. instead of rinsing it out with a hose, mm -hmm. um, where that rinse water can then pick up any trash or food or even oil and grease and gets rinsed into the storm drains mm -hmm. that lead directly to our rivers and oceans, right. they can dry sweep, mm -hmm. a very simple thing. Oh, just like you'd sweep your kitchen floor. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, they could also rinse um, their floor mats out inside mm -hmm. um, in the sink so that the, the rinse water drains um, into um, the system mm -hmm. and gets treated at a wastewater treatment plant instead of rinsing them out outside. Where they end up in the storm runoff. Yeah. So uh, do you train restaurants? Is there a training component? Or how do they find out about the techniques that they can do and then actually become certified? Well, the program, how it works, is that um, inspectors that work for the city, mm -hmm. they already do um, checks on restaurants mm -hmm. to see if they are um, satisfying their legal requirements for um, preventing stormwater pollution. Mm -hmm. um, but they, there's an extra checklist mm -hmm. of things that they can do, like the dry sweeping and rinsing the mats off ins indoors. Mm -hmm. um, and this checklist was developed, developed um, in cooperation with the seven cities that we've worked with. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, they just go down the, the list of things that, that they can do to prevent, um, again, um, So runoff. is it the inspectors that are educating the restaurants, or are they just checking to make sure the restaurants are doing this? The inspectors are checking to make mm -hmm. sure that they're, they're doing this. But you, in advance, if mm -hmm. they contact our organization mm -hmm. or these city inspectors, they can get the list of things that they can do to, be, to become part of the program. And how do they get that certificate? So the city inspectors go mm -hmm. and um, ch and make sure that the restaurants are abiding by the things on the checklist. Mm -hmm. So they have to have 100% um, compliance with the things on this list. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they, if they are doing all of those things and they do get indicted into the program, mm -hmm. and they get the certificate, which they can hang um, in their window. Sure, proudly yeah. display. Yeah. <laughs> And um, they also get um, listed on our website as a Clean Bay restaurant. And roughly how many restaurants are participating? So right now in the city of Santa Monica, there are 39 participating businesses. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And is it mostly businesses that are near the ocean, or is it all throughout the city? Um, it's mostly businesses um, by, well, we work with seven coastal cities. Sure. Yeah. So it's, it's any restaurant that's, that's within that city. Mm -hmm. And you also do some public outreach. I understand you have a pretty exciting uh, exhibit that you take to <laughs> yeah. the Santa Monica Festival and other kind of community yeah. events. We have an interactive booth. Mm -hmm. um, we created a live version of the Angry Birds game. How fun. But instead, <laughs> our game is called the Angry Bay game. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bay is angry because it's polluted. Mm -hmm. So we're asking the participants to come and help us make the bay a happier and cleaner place. So we've built these giant slingshots <laughs> and they can <laughs> swing these um, native uh, animal life through mm -hmm. holes in this backdrop. Fun. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's um, a pretty fun booth, it sounds like. Yeah, it's but in all of the holes, um, there are best management practices that restaurants um, can implement at their place of business. Mm -hmm. And so the people that play the game, there's an interactive way to see mm -hmm. how you can participate in the program and you can talk to people about it. So is it something that kids and adults can play? Of course. Play? <laughs> yes, we encourage everyone to, to play this game. A lot of times it's, it's just kids, but mm -hmm. it's definitely a lot of fun for adults as well. And so uh, how can the public support the program? You know, the average restaurant um, yeah. diner, which we all really love to do here in Santa Monica. Well, right, exactly. I love to eat out. You love to eat out. It's yeah. a very <laughs> simple way to support the program by mm -hmm. eating at a Clean Bay restaurant. Um, so, you know, next time um, um, you're making a decision on where to go have dinner, mm -hmm. um, go to our website, SantaMonicaBay.org, and um, one can look up the list of restaurants that are part of the program mm -hmm. and uh, 
at and dine at one of these these restaurants. And how do the restaurant owners feel about it? Um, I think they're they're pretty happy about the the business. I mean, um, it sounds like it might be a little bit more work, or maybe just a little, a little bit, bit more, more thought and care that has to go into how they run their business. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But I would think it probably makes the employees happy to know that they're working at a place that is supporting the environment and making a positive impact. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a very fun program to to work on because we get to work with the restaurant owners and the people that work there. Mm -hmm. And you can see that um, I mean they're they're doing the right thing. Right. So it makes you feel better. Mm -hmm. um, but also um, part of the program um, what makes it kind of cool mm -hmm. is that it gives um, people a way to identify if the restaurant is doing something to, to help clean the ocean. Right. So as people, you know, um, that are spending their money in the city, we can make an informed choice about where to eat. And, and try to eat at places that yeah. are really contributing to the community. Right, right. Well, Grace, thank you so much for being with us and for telling us about the Clean Bay Restaurant Program. It sounds like a fantastic initiative. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, next time you visit your favorite local eatery, look for a Clean Bay Restaurant Certificate from the Bay Foundation. If you don't see one, please take a moment to let them know about the program. I promise it'll make your meal taste even better. Please stay with us to hear about all the other initiatives that the Bay Foundation is working on. I thought I had everything under control. Then, one day, something happened. I didn't know how to stop it. I didn't know there was help. Until someone told me. Providing access to justice, the Legal Aid Foundation of Los Angeles can help with domestic violence issues, eviction defense, government benefits, immigration, and other civil legal issues. Welcome back. Here to provide the big picture on the Bay Foundation's work is its executive director, Tom Ford. Welcome. Thank you. So tell me the big picture. What's the overview? It sounds like the Bay Foundation is doing a lot of great work. Yeah, I th uh, when, I, when I think of us and try to put us in, in place, mm -hmm. uh, we serve the watersheds of Santa Monica Bay. Mm -hmm. So that is the waters that stretch roughly from the port in San Pedro mm -hmm. up to the county line. Mm -hmm. And there's you know two, two and a half million people that live in that area. Mm -hmm. And we are working on trying to improve their lives, ensure that their environment is healthy, clean, safe and that it's moving us in a direction that I think most of us want to see. Um, mm -hmm. Full of life, clean, ready to enjoy my beach. Exactly. Um, we want to go out and be able to enjoy the ocean yeah. and not see those signs that say pollution yeah. levels high. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's such an unfortunate thing. If you can imagine walking into your park and going, oh, <laughs> right, sorry, no picnic today. Right. right. Oh, gosh. The grass is poopy. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, there's there's a number of aspects that we have to work on through that. It's a very diverse landscape with mm -hmm. mountains and in our industrial centers, commercial centers, residential areas, as well as our beaches and our offshore ocean. And we work very comprehensively through all of that. Mm -hmm. um, we work with the public stakeholders, state agencies, sure. federal agencies. I mean, we heard about you working with restaurants and right. <laughs> with yeah. the community and with the government. Right. I mean, we all touch the environment every day. Mm -hmm. And the environment gives so much to us every day that we don't even recognize. You know, mm -hmm. take another breath of air. Mm -hmm. you know, right. There it is. <laughs> um, and so it is really our, our scope is, as a result is very broad. And how long has the Bay Foundation been in existence? Yeah, the Bay Foundation has had a few iterations, um, but we've been around serving this uh, community mm -hmm. for the past 25 years. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing because I bet our waters are a lot cleaner as a result of your work. Um, as a result of ours and many of the folks that we partner with. Um, so there have been great improvements mm -hmm. in the infrastructure in our city that have been provided by the city, by the county, um, all targeting trying to get those signs down, mm -hmm. make sure that our beaches are clean and healthy, that the bacteria levels are down, mm -hmm. uh, and then trying to build off of that work mm -hmm. and make sure that the ecosystems, you know, the fish and the sea grasses and all that other stuff coming back is also a big focus of us. So trying to take advantage of those improvements to now um, take us back to the next step. And so I know public education is a big part of your work. And I understand that there's a boater education program. Yes, there Can you is. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so um, boaters, obviously, 
understand the water, recreate on it. Mm -hmm. um, s many of them also have jobs that depend upon the water. We've got our commercial fishermen and the, and the tourists that uh, the boats support. Um, so our boat program is directed to them to give them ways to take care of their boat, maintain their boat, mm -hmm. take care of the sewage on their boat in a way that isn't damaging the environment and giving them the benefit of the knowledge to understand the services that are available to them mm -hmm. and then in places where we've seen, hey, these guys need some extra help. We need some more services in these marinas and harbors. Mm -hmm. We've gone out, encouraged those agencies that run those places to put in those facilities that are needed. Mm -hmm. And it's been such a successful program that we've expanded throughout the state. And now, you know, folks are going, can you do this in Nevada and Arizona for us as well? And we're going, <laughs> well, maybe, we'll have to figure <laughs> it out. Got to take care of us first. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but our boater program has been a very cool, cool project. Mm -hmm. um, and one of our most innovative, we've got an app now, you know, no big deal for some folks, I right. imagine, but for us, for that a nonprofit, that's pretty that impressive. That was big, yeah. So uh, folks can get our boater guide, and wherever they go, up and mm -hmm. down the coast, whatever marina they're in, they can find the services that they need to help support them and make sure that their boating is truly green. So I understand you were actually in the water today. Yes, it was. Yeah, I'm probably still wet in a few places <laughs> as I sit here. So you scuba dive. I do. As part of your work. Yes, um, uh, I have uh, always been fascinated by the ocean mm -hmm. since I was a kid. And uh, for the past 15 years, a big part of my work has been studying and restoring the kelp forests off of our coast. Mm -hmm. uh, we've lost uh, roughly 75% of them mm -hmm. over the past 100 years, and we have tested ways to bring them back. Mm -hmm. uh, we work with a diverse group of people to do that, fishermen, nonprofits, researchers, aquariums, government agencies. It's so really exciting. So what's causing the kelp forests to decline, and how do you bring right. them back? Yeah, so... Uh, there's a, a number of stressors mm -hmm. or a number of causes. Mm -hmm. uh, pollution is certainly part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, a loss of predation, meaning that the predators that used to be in the system that would eat the sea urchins oh. have been thinned out, um, reduced because of the water is no longer clean enough to support them maybe, or mm -hmm. through fishing pressure, we've taken too many lobsters, too many fish, and the sea otter, very notably, mm -hmm. out of our system uh, back in the 1850s. Wow. So we've let loose the herbivores. Uh, mm -hmm. So our urchins are running amok and stripping the forest clean. Mm -hmm. So essentially, we go in, we remove those urchins from the system, reduce their numbers, and then the kelp comes bouncing right back. Yeah, I understand it happens pretty quickly. It does. Um, I think that's the very, very exciting part of our project. Mm -hmm. um, giant kelp, the target species that we're interested in, that mm -hmm. big brown stuff floating out there on the surface of the ocean that you see when you visit sure. our areas, can grow two feet a day. Literally. Wow, two feet a day. Two feet a day. And uh, why are kelp forests important? How right. do they contribute to the health of the ocean and to our health? Sure. Uh, so the the way I, th th we call them kelp beds. Mm -hmm. I like to say that the benefits go beyond the bed. Um, <laughs> so when the kelp washes up on the beach, mm -hmm. right, we've all seen that. Sure. It starts to break apart and fall down in between the sand grains, mm -hmm. supports a whole community of animals there. Those animals mm -hmm. are fed upon by our migrating birds. So kelp feeds birds. Um, when it's in the ocean, the fish, the sharks, the seals, the birds, again, it's 715 species or so that live in our kelp forests and supported by them. Mm -hmm. So when we lose our kelp forests, all those animals are, you know, they're homeless. Mm -hmm. um, so by putting it back, we can protect those ecosystems that way, and we benefit our fisheries, mm -hmm. and we benefit our fishermen, and we support those coastal economies that are so very much a part of our history, and I think a very important part of our future as well. And so what's the status? How are we doing? Yeah, oh, we're, we're How doing much more work is there to be done? Yeah, oh, we've, we've, got, we've got some more to go. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we are at the beginning of this process right now, the, mm -hmm. the last iteration of it uh, with this group of people. Um, we cleared about five acres of the ocean floor this year, mm -hmm. and we do have another 145 to go. Wow, so yeah. there's a lot more work to be done. There is, absolutely. And how can our viewers and, and Santa Monica residents and people who want to care for the ocean, how can they get right. involved? Well, I, I think we've, we've gone through a number of our programs um, sure. here today. Um, so yes, our restaurant program makes a difference. Our boater program makes a difference. Mm -hmm. um, the work that we're able to do to encourage green infrastructure mm -hmm. um, to not only limit our pollutants, but maybe also increase our drinking water supply. Mm -hmm. All important things that we need people to stay aware of and support. Um, when they're going out fishing in the area or if they're a scuba diver, they can come out and join us and help in that effort. Um, but as every nonprofit that visits your stage, of course, if there's no other way to do it, 
um, our Donate Now button is waiting for them. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for being with us and for telling us about the great work that you're doing. Very good. Thank you. All right. Well, it, this has been really enlightening. And I'm so glad that you could be with us for this edition of Nonprofit Profiles. I hope you feel inspired to get involved with the Bay Foundation to do your part in stewarding your waters. To get involved, visit santamonicabay.org or call 213-576-6615.